Or take a swat. Borrow this print. Might as well.
Stink! This is a messy one. I'll be having that. That's one. This looks like the one.
all this print. Thanks, partner. Looks like you already done most of the dirty work. All right. That looks like everyone in town. Let's head up to the mansion and finish this. They got the high ground and plenty of cover up at the house. Be careful, partner. What kind of joke criminals are you? There's a couple of them in the basement. You head down there. I'll give you cover. Shit! The law don't do it! Take this fella down! You are good as me! Let's see.
I sure appreciate all the help, partner. It won't be forgotten. I promise you that. Might as well. Oh, Lord, this is nasty. This will fetch a good price. That's what I wanted.
Yeah! Beauty.
Christ, I see another sentient being out here. Name's Sam. Sam Odessa. Anyway, that's the name they gave my grandpappy when he came across New York City. Good to meet you, Sam Odessa. I'm John Marston. You long way from home? Where you come from? Yeah, yeah, well, it would be if I had a home to come from. Been out here for several weeks, or several generations, I guess. Would have made better time, but my horse came up lame a ways back. Trying to get to California. See the ocean. I hear it's wet. From the Black Sea to the Pacific in three generations. I'm gonna make something of myself there. I'm gonna find something. Here they got a fine line of earthquakes out there. Maybe you can find one of them. <laughs> Listen. Gap Tooth ain't so friendly to strangers. I suggest you head back to Benedict Point before you run afoul one of these gangs that run it out of here. Well, thank you very much for the kind advice, Mr. Marston. I appreciate it. Let me I'll go get me on a coach. Here's your flowers, Billy. Well, thank you. Not many around these parts that help an old man with such a task. Thanks again, stranger. Come on in and have some tea with me and Annabelle. I'm sure she'd love the company. All right. Maybe just for a minute. This is my other half. Lovely Annabelle. <clears throat> Much obliged. This a man helped me find these lovely flowers, Annabelle. Not half as lovely as you. <laughs> yeah, no, no, you don't look a day over 30, ma'am. Wait, it's a fine air and the good living up here in New Austin that keeps us so young and full of vigor. Annabelle was mentioning she wants to go up to Blackwater, ride one of those newfangled motor cars. Huh? No bumpy old horse carriage for my angel. <laughs> That's a good idea, Billy. I should get going. Well, you haven't had your tea. And, and, and Annabelle... Baked her special blackbird pie. Yeah, I'm sorry, Billy. I must have forgot. I've got an appointment with Planet Earth. Nice to meet you, ma'am. Farewell, John. Stop by any time. Oh, we play bridge on Thursdays. Howdy, friend. I didn't know anyone lived out here. Whoa! 
Now you can't rob the place now, can you? Now get! Friendly old bastard, ain't you? I don't need me no friends, friend. We all need friends, old timer. We die alone, but we live among men. You know, I was interested in moving out this way with my family. Would you be willing to sell me a parcel of land? We wouldn't even have to speak or nothing. Land's too dry for farming. Bandits run all the cattle off. Why you want this land? I guess I just like the scenery. Well, I don't know. Maybe for $200 I could give you the deed of this land, find myself a place up in Blackwater. Although I never could stand the people down there. No, sir. Make up your mind. I ain't got all day. Just give me the... This is mighty generous of you, mister. Let's go! Well, don't just stand there. Get over here. Well, howdy. You got the deed? Yep. Here it is. Yeah. Oh, there's blood on this deed, Marston. I didn't tell you to kill the poor old man. Here, take the money. That old bastard's got a son living up in Blackwater, so I'd be real careful not to publicize this sale too much. Unless killing entire families is a pleasure of yours, of course. Good luck with the property, McAllister. Yeah. Come on!
Howdy, miss. Uh, what are you doing out here? Um, I'm thinking. Have I seen you before? Oh, uh, yes, I think so. On the train from Blackwater, perhaps. Yeah. Yeah, you were talking with the preacher. Yes, sir, I was. I don't know if it's so safe out here, miss. Oh, Jenny. You can call me Jenny. Uh, uh, all right. Uh, I'm safe because I, I have faith. So uh, faith can move mountains. That's the whole point. You're trying to move a mountain? Oh, no. Uh, I can't do anything. But with faith, I can achieve great things. I know that. I know it. You want me to take you back into town, ma'am? You seem kind of unwell. Oh, I, I get such clarity out here. I see things purely. The world is so beautiful. And full of things that'll kill you. <laughs> including illness. Nothing's gonna kill me, sir. Well, take care then. Whole town needs. Hello, friend. You need something for that gout? I'm thinking this whole Wild West adventure might have been the wrong Good to see you again. No need for that, partner. care of the thief. Here's the money he stole. You're a real American, Parr. Keep some of the money for payment. If they wouldn't arrest me for it, I'd torch that train station. Hello. Come on!
Miss Jenny. <coughs> Miss Jenny. Don't look like the Almighty's much inclined to help you out here. I was kind of worried about you, so I brought you some medicine. Oh, oh heavens. Oh, praise you, Lord. I knew you'd save me. <coughs> Excuse me? You see, it was only through his will that you were ordered to save me. Tell me, <coughs> were there angels in your vision? Jenny, uh, can I take you back into town? Praise you, Savior. I knew you'd save me. <coughs> Will you come with me? Oh, I'm fine here, mister. I, I'm in heaven. <coughs> heaven. <coughs> Excuse me. Excuse me, sir. You need help? Mister, you alive? Fuck, oh, fuck. God damn it. Good heavens. Excuse me? I said, no, I'm not okay. Do I look like I'm okay? You look pretty good for a corpse. <laughs> Praise be. <laughs> Move up, mister. Time to get you to a doctor or an undertaker. Whichever you need once we get to town. Uh, St. Peter, open up them pearly gates. I'm coming home. Oh. <laughs> Come on, mister. Come on. Oh. Oh. Hurry, sir. I'm bleeding like a badly butchered hog. You'll be fine. Just focus. You better take the reins. I don't think I'm strong enough. Oh, I'm finished. Done for. Just sit up straight, will you? The closest doctor is in Armadillo. What is your name, friend? John Morstan. Oh, good God! Out of the frying pan into the fire! Excuse How me? How many outlaws can a man encounter in one day? You must have me mistaken with somebody else, friend. The Bobber Twins! Walton's gang! I know who you are! Word sure travels fast around here. I'm a man with many connections. Spare my life, I beg of you. Good Lord! It's those scoundrels once again! Doctor! What the hell happened to you? Bandits! 
hoodlums! The scoundrels robbed me blind and left me to die! I can see that. Once again, a victim of my own success. They seem to be a man in a well cut suit if this happens. Do you know who they were? No idea. I'm not the kind of man who has enemies. You do now. I give so much and still they take. We live in an uncivilized and graceless world, friend. Our maker is a funny sense of humor sometimes. Still, at least I met you. How many of these humans are there? Oh, get out! I implore you to please stay on the road! There's him and Master Jump! After! Armadillo. We made it safe. You'll be happy to know. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You're a gentleman and a, a true man of honor. Coming from you, I doubt that means much, but I appreciate the civility. I owe you, sir. And I always pay my debts. Uh, Jesus! But if I die, I'm sorry for it. If not, I'll be your man for... for... Let's get you fixed up first. Then we'll decide what you're my man for. Ah, since you're here, you want to make yourself useful? Not particularly. Listen, son, I know you got a mission. But right now, I need another gun. Why? What's happening? You've had this problem for months with this group of bandits who are getting drunk and murdering settlers. Last night, they went to a big place up near Ridgewood. They burnt the place down, killed the men, burning most of them alive, and raped the women. Women folk then got their throats slit. One of them survived and walked in here this morning. Anyway. We got a posse gathering up near Ridgewood. Will you ride with us? All right. Thank you, John Marston. 
Gonna be a bloody job. Huh. I don't think I know any other kind, sir. Hey, wait up! Let's hit the breeze, boys. Marston, I hear you caught up with Mr. West Dickens. I did. For a man who claims to have found a remedy to all ailments, he was in pretty bad shape. His tonic has helped a great many people. It's a medical breakthrough from the East, the result of years of research. If only you could cure him of his diarrhea of the mouth. I wouldn't be so dismissive of science if I was you. I'm just changing fast. He's no more a scientist than I am a priest. But people can spend their hard-earned money however they please. He's certainly a character, that West Dickens. I can't understand a goddamn word he said. A more flannel-mouthed bunko artist I've never met. Look, vultures. We should check it out. Marston, Eli, go see what it is. Let's go! Ain't no survivors here, Marshal! Man, this don't look too good. Somebody was so busy killing people, they went and dropped their gun. must still be around. Come on! Come on, let's ride! They kind of got too far. Sons of bitches! If you want to run a gang of outlaws, Marston... Can't see a soul anywhere. This ain't right. Let's search the area! Nobody's in the shed! boarded up. Come on, John. Shoot that door open. <laughs> oh, 
Holy sweet mother of mercy. Please, please don't shoot me. Some bandits came by and took us hostage. They're holed up in the farmhouse. Some of my family is being kept hostage inside. <laughs> Shed in the back as soon as it looks clear. Thank you. I was convinced I was dead. Yeah. Keep your head down. Thank you. They said they were gonna kill us all. Look like that's all of them. Let's see how the hostages are doing. That was your problem, Marcus. Excuse me, mister. Chasing him down like wild dogs. I thought you were supposed to protect us, Marshal. You folky men. You ain't nothing. You're just some man on a government payroll taking money that the rest of us have to pay for with our lives. Yeah. What is wrong with this country? Not up, men. The man that kills the boss of that bunch gets fifty dollars. It ain't about the money, Marshal. These are people's lives, people's homes. <laughs> Come on, they're gonna get away! Alright, let's find those bastards. Go! Do you think they might be headed for Fort Mercer, Marshal? What? Williamson's men? Maybe. Oh, this sure looks like their handiwork. Makes sense if we took this road. Come on, Marshal! This might be our chance! What's your beef with Williamson anyway, Marston? Let's just say he's the currency in a complicated transaction. What the hell are you talking about? Some people I have the displeasure of knowing want him dead. Why does that involve you? We used to run in a gang together. He was once like family. If this is how you treat your family, I'd hate to see what you do to your enemies. That was a lifetime ago. And bear in mind, he's left me for dead the last two times I've seen him. I'm about big. Is that somebody on the cliff? You just walk away now, John. I didn't kill you before, but I sure as shit will now. Get yourself down here, Bill. You know you ain't man enough to stop me. 
<laughs> you know I don't want to kill you, but I will. You always did have a high opinion of yourself, John. <laughs> Dutch always said you were an arrogant son of a bitch. I guess he was about right. Get him, boys! Everybody, take cover! In that shed! Pleasure doing business with you, boys. Hey, look what I got here. <laughs> There's something that you're still breathing. <laughs> Come here, boy. <laughs> Come on, Bessie. Give. <laughs> oh. Norman Deke. <laughs> Fuck. Nice to see you again, buddy. Thanks for your help, John. Norman here is going to help us get to Bill. <coughs> Ain't you, Norman? Thank you, Mr. Dick. Mighty kind. Fuck you! Hog time. Let's get him to jail. I doubt you'll be needing this. Pleasure, ma'am.
Excuse me, Mr. Marston. Have you seen my father anywhere? No. He went out this morning to ride the land and was supposed to be back hours ago. I don't know. The ranch hands have been out looking, but so far they've found nothing. Well, come on. Let's go look for him. Come on. Let's see if we can find the old goat. Let's go. I've got a bad feeling about this. Not like him to be away for so long. Don't worry. We'll find him. He's not as young as he used to be. What if he's hurt himself? Your father can still handle himself just fine, Miss McFarland. He's built like an oak. You're probably right, but I can't help worrying. He's all I've got. Don't you have any brothers or sisters, Miss McFarland? I had six brothers, but five of them died, either from sickness or foolish choices. And the other one? He left for the east and never came back. Must be getting on for 10 years ago now. He's a high and mighty banker in New York, according to his last letter. He should be here, helping you and your pa. I don't want his help. He can live his life any way he wants. But when I see those city fellers coming in on the railway, all dressed up like a sore toe, I fear a little for his soul. He switched his saddle for a tie, and that's fine. I just never met a man in a tie I could trust. Nice. Wrestlers, I guess. Maybe the Baller twins, that bunch. Now you head back to the ranch right now and fetch your wagon. Yes, sir. Marston, you watch after her. I'll do that, sir. Giddy up! What could have happened to those poor men? And their horses were dead, too. I think we should get back there as soon as we can. Who could have done something like that? Your boss seemed to have an idea who it was. Let's just do what he says and get the wagon. Rustlers, I've got a good mind to head over to Pike's Basin myself. I don't think that's a good idea. And you're no better. How many men have you killed? Do you really want to know? It's disgusting. You never met the men I killed. I heard the way you talked about that gang you were in. Like there was some twisted morality to what you did. We all have a code. Only some of us don't realize The outlaw it. with the code? How wonderfully romantic. The reluctant murderer, the noble criminal. There's nothing more depressing than a man who's found a way to think the bad into good. You're upset. Oh my god! The barn's on fire! Come on. Easy.
You sure know how to handle yourself. Thanks, Marston. Yes, John, thanks. You, well, you saved the ranch. If you'll excuse me, I, I've got chores to attend to. Hey, w hold on a second over there. Sincerely, John, thank you. Well, I did all I could, Miss McFarland. Sorry about all the damage. That gang seems to really want you out of here. Yeah, well, my father fought Indians. I scarcely think we're going to be frightened by some white trash. White trash can be pretty frightening. Well, they don't frighten me. Good. John, my family owes you a great debt. I think you got enough debt. You saved my life. All I ask of you is this. If I get back home and get my farm started back up, you'll sell me some cattle. I prefer doing business with people I know. Of course, Mr. Marston. It'd be my pleasure. Um, well, you get some rest. I've got to go see how my father's bearing up. I don't have a clue. All right, but it's got to be something to do with that government boy. We'll talk to him, find out what he knows. Fucking is. Where is she, Marston? <laughs> Who? Who? My daughter, you fucking scum. Where's Bonnie? I don't know. I haven't seen her since after the fire. Why? Why? Because she hadn't been seen since yesterday afternoon. You know, I don't think I can cope. If I lose another child... Now, Drew, <laughs> nobody's lost anything yet. I'm sure she's fine. Oh, Mr. Marshall! Mr. Marshall! Come out, come out, wherever you are! Who the hell's that? Hey, buddy! <laughs> that be your next fucking mayor. Even better! Good day, Mr. McFarland. Get down from that horse, boy, or I'll shoot. <laughs> I wouldn't recommend that, mister. 
Not if Drew McFarlane wants to see his bunny back in one piece. Hey, Mr. McFarlane! This is a nice girl you got there. Get out from there! You know, part of me's got to thinking I should just marry her myself. Give her a baby and that. What do you want? That's better. I want Norman Deke. I want him set free. Then you'll get your daughter back, mister. We don't do deals with outlaws, boy. Yeah, you do! Let's not waste each other's time pretending otherwise. Oh, government themselves ain't much more than a bunch of crooks. This is the land of opportunity, mister. And I'm giving you the opportunity to get your daughter back before 15 friends of mine take out all their anger and their loneliness on her. Where the hell is she? Where is she, boy? Bring Deke up to Tumbleweed in a couple hours. And don't get no funny ideas, or I will slit that horse throat myself! You boys have a pleasant afternoon. Yeah! What do we do? We do as he says. You and me, Marshal. Mr. McFarland, I'll get you your daughter back. I owe her that. Please do. I'll teach you some respect for the law. Hurry up, boy. Let's go. Quick as you can, deputy. Make sure he's tied on good. Stay with me, Marston. I won't let anything happen to her, sir. Yeah. Come on, let's ride hard to Tumbleweed. See, this is what happens when the Federals interfere in our affairs. Are you happy now? No, I ain't happy at all. And I already told you, I ain't with the government. Now you say that, John, but the only thing I know for sure is who sent you. They made me come here. They gave me no choice. That's your federal government, Mr. Johnson. They come down here dressed as cocky as the King of Diamonds, talking a lot of flannel about helping us, about spreading peace and civilization to the West, but they brought nothing but trouble and taxes. I agree with you. Wolves in cheap clothing, all of them, rob you, then make you pay to have someone investigate the crime on your behalf. People around here have been fooled into feeling protected when they're worse off than they were before. The fellas I know don't care about people. All they care about is lining their pockets. Why's this sorry son of a bitch so important to them? Norman Deke, Williamson, right-hand man. In other words, a glorified errand you boy. You wait, Marshal. I'll be back for you. Bill standards have slipped. We already filled you with lead once, you ugly bastard. That's the kind of man who's mean enough to be second in command, but too cowardly and stupid to ever be a leader. Don't ever use that line near your deputies. You know, for his sake, they'd best not have laid a finger on Mr. McFarland. What is this place we're headed? Tumbleweed, lonely godforsaken place. Some people say it's haunted. It was quite a town back in its day. Then they built the railroad to Armadillo and went clean past Tumbleweed, and that was that. Pretty soon, everybody had up to the left. Now it's just thieves, smugglers, and bandits. Scum like Deke here. Oh, popular spot for lynchings, too. Let's try to avoid that if we can, Marshal. I just hope you're not taking advantage of the McFarland, Marston. They saved my life. They gave me food and bed when they had no idea who I was. I owe them more than I can ever repay. That's just they've been through a lot. Well, they're both vulnerable in different ways. I wouldn't have been running in and out of a burning barn to save their horses otherwise. I know you helped, just like you helped me. But you got your reasons for doing it. It's no secret why I'm here, Marshal. I told you the very first time I walked into your office. I trust you. It's just all this business with Blackwater and Williamson and Pam. I don't know. Sometimes it's hard not to have doubt. I understand. I never planned to be in the lawman business, neither. How is this mess supposed to turn out? Sending an outlaw to do the work of a lawman. That's madness. Ain't much difference between the two, as far as I can tell. There have to be rules, Marston. Even you must understand that. It's easy to make up rules, but they ain't much use if people don't understand why. Like my son. If I tell him not to do something, he'll do it anyways, just to spite me. If I punish him, he resents me for it. But if I show him why it's wrong, uh, at least he has reason not to do it again. That's nonsense. Without laws, we're nothing more than animals. 
You look at Deke here. Man has worked hard at civilization. Your boy steps out of line, you whack him. He does it again, whack him harder. You're a good man, Marshal, and I respect what you're trying to do. From what I've seen since I've arrived here, the law ain't really working. Criminals are like weeds, Marston. Quicks you stomp one out, another one sprouts up in its place. It's the nature of places. You know that as well as I do. The problem with laws is everybody ain't the same. And why should a bunch of rich university boys in the East think you're a man, do you? I'll kill all three of you myself, I swear! be exchanging the prisoner for Bonnie in the middle of town. Keep your eyes open. I sincerely doubt these scum plan to play fair. Fair my ass. You bet. Besides, Norm here is going to be my shield, ain't you, Norm? <laughs> It'd be my pleasure. John, you lead Deke into town. Make the exchange. I'm sure it's been nice for the boys to have a whore to play with. I hear those rancher girls like it in the rear. Maybe she won't want to go home. She's been fucked so good. Why don't you save some of that breath for breathing? Come on now, boys. Cut me loose. Wait. Where's Bonnie, you bastards? <laughs> Trust in...
out of here. Are you okay? <laughs> I'm fine now, Mr. Marston. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> what the hell took you so long, you stupid man? Well, you weren't exactly helping me. If you think I'm gonna lower myself by making a joke about being all tied up, you got another thing coming. Come on. <clears throat> Hello. All right, sorry. 
Don't arrest me. Take a look, Al. Be a blind. 
No good piece of dirt. Thank you. What's your problem, partner? Forgive me, lady. Unless you want to start working for Pepper Guts, you'll keep Johns as far as That's possible mighty kind of. Governor's Mansion. Them bean eaters got a right old civil war brewing. Sure as shooting.
man is getting more bold than close to the board of the time.
room for one more? I could really use a hand, friend. I'm way over my head here. Them animals. Walton's boys have taken my daughter. Looks like we got trouble heading our way. You're safe. Let's get you back home.
that school was tough three long in the other week. And I can tell you, with no uncertainty, that miracle cures are no laughing matter. I bid you good day, sir. Uh. <laughs> oh, Mr. Marston, good to see you. How have you been keeping? I'm well, Mr. Uh, Mr. West Dickens. Nigel West Dickens of East Cheap, London, New Waverly, New York, and Armadillo, New Austin. At your service. At my service. At everyone's service, at the service of science, of knowledge, of life. Uh, <laughs> how are your wounds? Hmm? Oh, oh, uh, much, much better. But then they would be. Mm -hmm. Would be? I know a cure for all ailments, Mr. Marston. Ah, I'm sure you do. And I'm sure for just $2 an ounce, I could live forever. Oh, but for you, sir, I do a bulk discount rate of $1.95 an ounce. <laughs> as long as you buy 100 ounces or more, that's a lot of immortality. Uh, give it up, old man. That's Mr. West Dickens to you, boy. Give it up, old man. <laughs> uh, listen, Marston, I'm broke. But this stuff is good. It works. I need a healthy young man like you. <laughs> Come along, and let's ride over to my newest customer at Ridgewood, and I'll explain while we go. Okay. <laughs> Head for Ridgewood Farm, John, and hurry. There are people there in dire need of my tonic.
West Dickens. And I am out to that Carson. Put weak in the weak, gullible out of their hard earned money. My dear boy, it is you who is gullible, if I may be so bold, for heeding such ill informed scuttle. You're as full of wind as a horse with the collar. I have been blessed with the gift of language, and for that I will not apologize. But the West Dickens elixirs speak for themselves. My thousands of happy customers attest to that. If my tonic is such a sham, how do you explain the fine battle in which you find me? Last time you saw me, I was knocking at death's door. You should thank the doctor for that. I reckon you were acting it up worse than it was. Act I can, John. A more convincing old fellow there has never been. And so shall we. Either Iago, or Cassio make. I don't like the sound of that. Showmanship, John. The flourish. The bow. We are operating in a competitive marketplace. Our product must stand out. And how does this involve me? We're going to use your God-given talents to our advantage. I'm really starting to regret this. I'll drop this. you off at the outskirts of Bridgewood. That way, it won't look like we came together. Once I'm set up, saunter nonchalantly into the crowd that is sure to be born. Eventually, I will call you up to try my talent. After extolling the virtues, I will have you perform a few feats of wonder to amaze and impress the pain. Such as? Oh, nothing out of the ordinary for a man in your line of work, I assure you. You hop out here, John. Follow me in on foot. I'll see you there. Be ready to enchant the crowd. souls of uh, Chola Springs, gather round, gather round. Do you suffer from rheumatism, lumbago, acute chronic sciatic, uh, uh, neurologic or inflammatory pain? Well, I represent the only company that makes the genuine article that cures headaches, neuralgia, uh, earache, toothaches, backache, swelling, sprains, sore chests, swelling of the throats, contracted cords and muscles, anxieties and ravaged nerves, stiff joints, wrenches, dislocations, cuts and bruises, and it adds vitality and vigor to the healthy man. <laughs> but can you prove it, old man? Oh, I'm sure there's some customer here who could prove the qualities of its by Take a drink right now. You, sir, come up here. Step right up. That's the spirit. Ladies and gentlemen, pay close attention. This poor, wretched volunteer, entirely unknown to me, will demonstrate the effects of Dr. West Dickens' own patent tonic. Be you a cowpoke or athlete, this miraculous elixir developed with the wisdom of the East keeps the muscles supple and relaxes the cords. It loosens the joints and gives a feeling of youth and vigor to the whole system. Not possible, I hear you say. Well, doubt no longer. Faith can move mountains, but I ask not for faith. I am a man of science, and today science will be vindicated. Your eyesight is greatly improved, is that not so, friend? If you say so. That's right, it is. You heard him. What a good sport you are, sir. Now, gaze over yonder at that porch. If you squint, you may just be able to make out the skull that's hanging there. Go ahead, friend. Shoot that skull and demonstrate the miraculous eyesight you now possess. Come 
remarkable! The eyesight of an eagle, granted by imbibing Dr. West Dickens' own patent tonic. Anybody can make that shot. This man is a fraud. If your eye is so damn sharp, why don't you try shooting my hat out of the air? My friends, our test case has been challenged to shoot a gentleman's hat out of the sky above our heads. You can fool these people, but you ain't fooling me. Right. Let's just see how sharp you is with a moving target. Get ready to shoot that hat. You're more crooked than a snake and a cat. Have you ever seen such an eye? Behold the power of the elixir plucked out of the sky. Hey! Hey! What? You think you can put a hole in a man's hat and just walk away, do you? They well, don't work like that around right here, mister. Come on! Are you a man or not? A challenge of battle has been offered to our volunteer. Look at him! The tonic is coursing through his veins! I'm putting you down hard! You've got some nerve! Come on! Let's make this quick! Come on! Hit me! The power of the There it is! Skeptics and dissenters! Irrefutable proof! Do not let this opportunity pass you by! Don't let him get away with that! Look, he's over there! Go get him! This ends now! Watch out! He's got a gun! Who the hell do you think you are? You ain't leaving here alive! Ah! Hey, marvelous shot, dear boy! The kind of deadly accuracy that can only be afforded by the West Dickens elixir! Come! I have plenty for all! Damn! You'll be fine. Get out of my way. Hey! Where are you going? Oh, I, I want a bottle. Get me a bottle, please. One of them right here. Yeah, no harm in trying one bottle, I suppose. Well, I think that went kind of well, don't you? I'm just glad that my normal job involves either chasing after cattle or murderers. Not the likes of you, mister. Don't be like that. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'd like to say my goodbyes, head on back to the real world. Uh, 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 wait, sir. I, I've been thinking about your predicament, and uh, I think I may have an idea. I've been thinking I could be your cunning Odysseus. Beware of the Greeks bearing gifts, sir. Mm -hmm. Williamson had better beware. We will make them into Trojans. I don't rightly get you. I want you to go and see my old friend, Seth. Uh, he can come across as a little curious, but I'm sure you two will get on. Uh, he's uh, most often found at Coote's Chapel. He's very devout. Why see him? Because between him and me, we can get those gates to open for you, and you can walk right in, just like in Homer's great Trojan yarn! <laughs>
his steed looks right fetchy. I don't mind telling. Good luck, son. He's a wild one, and no mistake. Relax now. Easy. Easy. Impressive, son. Good job. Sam. Sam Odessa. You still out here? How's it going? Hey, hey, uh, Mr. 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 Manchin, isn't it? Yeah. How you doing? Let's see. Manchin. <laughs> I kind of like that. You all right out here? Well, yeah. <laughs> you ain't too much closer to California. Yeah, I, I found it. The coach wasn't so much to my liking. It was, it was a little bit 
slow, a little bit predictable, and a touch mundane, but, th but these... These cacti are, are, are quite palatable. I hope they are. Hey, listen. You need to find yourself a horse if you're gonna head west. Yeah, um, a horse is, is, a, is a very noble creature. Do you, you ever hear the, the tale of the, uh, the horse who could, who, you know, could do sums better than any school child? I think I missed that one. See, if I could just, if I could have a trusty steed like that who could take me to the, to the shining... Uh, see. Ah, oh, Sam, listen. California's in the west. Just follow the setting sun. It ain't that complicated. All right? You take care of yourself. Setting sun. Excuse me, are you Seth? Who are you? I'm a friend of Mr. Wes Dickens. My name is Marston. John Marston. Goodbye, John Marston. It's been a great pleasure. I need your help, Seth. We need your help. Me and Mr. Wes Dickens. Let me be frank for one second, partner. I hate people. It was people who got me in this mess in the first place. What mess? Look at me! Look! Scrambling around, looking for maps, half insane. I ain't washed in six months. My hair falling out, my mind's going. What happened? <laughs> what happened? My partner. He stole half my map. I never would have done that to him. Never! Look at me. Who did this to you? My partner. My boy, my man. Moses Ford. I don't have the facility to tell you what I would have done for that man and what I would do to him now. Why? Because he stole half my goddamn map. And what map's that then? The map, partner. The map that tells me where it is. Where what is, friend? I ain't telling you that. I ain't. <laughs> don't make me tell, partner. <laughs> it's mine. It's mine. All mine. Sure. And where's this Moses now? He's at Benedict Point. The law got him for exhuming. Some people, they feel differently. Not Moses. Him and me are the same. The self-same. Well... Come on, Seth. Let's go see Moses, get you your map back. Then maybe you'll help me. All right, partner. Let's go. Horses are over here! Faster! How can you sink that low? Digging up graves and looting from the dead. Ha, hypocrite! The whole damn lot of you. Are you saying it's better to steal from the living? Yeah!
What'd you say? I, I didn't say nothing. I just heard you say something. You're a crazy man. You should get that head looked at. Seth, I need someone who can get a wagon inside Fort Mercer. I was told you could help me, but I'm not sure you even know what day it is. I don't. I can't even tell you what year it is. I knew this was a waste of time. So, you want to go after Bill Williamson, do you? You know Bill? Oh, yes. I met Williamson and Deke and all them boys. Sometimes they call me on when they get some special job needs doing. I got a reputation as a man who'll do things most other fellers won't. Now, that I can believe. I reckon you can get in there, no bother. Assuming you help me find this map, that is. about this map? Nothing much. Just unimaginable riches and such like. A spark of hope that lit a raging fire I can't put out. I thought as much. Another treasure hunter losing everything in the search for nothing. Oh, I lost it all, partner. My wife, my children, my business. Good riddance to them all. I don't eat, I don't sleep, I don't wash, and I don't care. I know. I can smell you from here. It used to be about the money, but now I don't know who I am no more. I see myself, but it's like I'm looking at somebody else. Only it's me, you know? Maybe it's time you moved on. No way I can stop now. It's taking me over. <laughs> There's no difference between night and day. Just darkness. I want to see the sunshine again. I've seen some candidates for Bedlam in my time, but you might just win the prize straight, Jack. This is it. Let's stop here a moment and come up with a plan. As far as I know, Moses is being held in that shack. There's a couple of deputies keeping guard outside. Can you distract him so I can sneak in for a quick parlay with that son of a bitch? I'm sure I can think of something. Leave them away from the shack and out of sight. Somewhere out past that hill. This is one god awful assignment. I know. This place is deader than a side of the shack. Are you looking for trouble, mister? Yeah! <laughs>
Good job getting rid of them clowns. Now keep an eye out in case they come back. Moses? Oh, Moses? You got a visitor. Oh, my God, Seth. They arrested me. It weren't my fault. Ah! Get the hell away from me! Get that slippery bastard! I need him alive, though! Just leave me alone! I'll give you double. Huh? We'll split it between us, just me and you. We're in a bit of a rush. Whatever he told you, it's a lie. Moses, you son of a bitch! Where's my damn map? Damn you, Seth! Damn you, Seth! You've always been a twisting little freak! I ain't telling you shit! Ah! Then I'm gonna cut you ah, up ah, piece ah. by piece. <laughs> Till you find your tongue. Friend, this man's ah. gone crazy in the sun. Ah. I suggest you take my advice and start talking. Shut up, Marston! I want to cut into a bona fide man's ah. flesh. Ain't ah. never cut into a live ah. one before. <laughs> Odd, odd fellow's rest. It's an odd fellow's rest. Now, get away from me once and for all. Well, ain't that a damn shame. I was starting to enjoy myself. I think you gone pissed yourself, Moses. <laughs> Those deputies went and put a bounty on your head. Best we clear it now. Don't need the law on our backs. I don't have no money, but I got me a pardon letter. Here, take it. You earned it for helping me with Moses. Uh. Come on, we can pay it off in the telegraph office. Uh. Uh. Hurry up, I need to go find that map. Here, read this pardon letter. Go this on, man, you can clear it out the desk. Don't do nothing foolish now. So, mister, thanks for your help. Don't worry yourself with thanks, Seth. Just help me when I come ask it. No problem, mister. Take a look at you. When you take a look at you, you look like you've seen trouble, mister, enough for a hundred men. Trouble has a way of finding me, mister. Do I like the sound of that? Do I ever like the sound of that? Trouble with a capital T. That's just capital. Whatever you say. Cold, tough, but with a heart of gold. The cowboy sings his lonely song like like a dog whose bone is made of wood. Excuse me? Oh, nothing. I, I was just writing my next piece. 
I've been sent out here to provide a little frontier joie de vivre for the ladies back east. I don't understand a word you're saying, mister. Yeah, my ma felt the same way. And now she wrote me out of her will, and there's no hope for any of us. <laughs> uh, Jimmy Saint, sir, at your disposal. But uh, please don't dispose of me just yet. <laughs> what are you doing out here, Jimmy? Capturing the spirit of the West for a monthly back East. You know, I'm uh, sending them my oh-so-witty and oh-so-pertinent missives and gaining myself a little prize in the bargain. So it's action I'm after, and action I'm gonna find, too. <laughs> Wild men, cheap women, you know, guns, that sort of thing. <laughs> well, you have fun. Fun? <laughs> I'm gonna have the time of my life, sport. I tell you, mister, the time of my little old life. <laughs> Get your ass over here! How about I make you famous? All you gotta do is agree to a duel. You think you uh, bastard big me? Words, my friend. from looking at you. I'm in, gentlemen. This is gonna hurt! Oh, hello there. I'm in. Another way I arrived near Mescalero yesterday. And how was your movement this morning? Howdy! What do you want? Um, hello? hello. 
Think I'll make a bid. It's an educated guess. Nothing more. Wow, that Drew McFarlane's been causing trouble again. Why are you sweating? That can't be right. How are you? Good day. Well, that contract was a phony. Them bean eaters got a right old civil war brewing. Sure, shoot. Get on. The honest man is handicapped at this table. Time and shit himself again. Interesting. I wonder. What you doing around here? Hello. Right. My bed. Sure about that. I heard them rustling some pipe space in the head. Hey, you're Ruin. still in, partner. You can call me if you think it's wise. I'll bid. Shit, what do you take me for? Good day. Master Johnson's been digging around here some. I, I ain't buried yet. Why? Them bean eaters got a right over to the war brewing. Sure, shoot. Yay! Yeah. My husband don't know. How did y'all? How about that? I'll make a bid. I do you do. Mm, I don't trust that call. Nice to see it. That didn't go well for you. Every barkeeper out here thinks that we can't taste the water he mixes with the whiskey. Wouldn't have said it if I didn't think it true. I don't know about you. My bit. Oh, hello there. He's Damn. just an under this guy is for you. raided on Butter yeah, Bridge. He's got a right old civil war brewing. Sure, shoot. Ah, it's been a while. Hey! Why don't I make a bid? Good day. All right. Let's see. Hmm. I smell bullshit. Bluff. Yeah! That's what I like I to know see. Davy has with the greasers. I'll find him. Another wagon got robbed. Wonder if you're a liar or not. That's so, huh? They say it's going to rain hard tomorrow. What's going on? I do you do? Good bid. Spot on. That deal almost ruined me. Hello. You're on your way out, amigo. I'm just too honest to be good at this game. They're going to a right down the book of my business. Where's your sin? 
heard them rustles from Pike's face in the head. Get on. Huh. Who just see How about that? Good day. I do you do. I'm gonna bid. You sly dog. Good day. Shit. Take I my die. I'm white. How do you do? You know that old time enough shit himself again? Here's my bid. It's a educated guess. Nothing more. Hmm. Now are you full of shit, I wonder? You're bluffing. How do you do? Master Seal. That see didn't go well. That Jimmy Farley's been causing trouble here. again. Think I'll make a bid. You can call me, if you think it's wise. How you doing? Good day. The Good honest day. man is handicapped at this table. Howdy, hey. child. Interesting. I wonder. Those never sweats won't keep me from my business. Just what I was gonna say. Uh, hello there. We That's me out of doubt. That Them bean eaters got a right old civil war, bro. Any up? How do you do? Bed. Hmm. You look like a bullshit. I heard another train got raided on Butter Bridge. There goes another die. He's just an underprivileged fool. I don't know about you. Have your senses failed you? I do you do. Hey! Sounds about right to me. Master Johnson's been digging around here some. Them bean eaters got a right old civil war brewing. Sure as shooting. Sorry about that. Why are you sweating? Good day. My bed. Yeah. <laughs> You're a wily one, all right. Contract was a phony. Them bean eaters got a right old civil war brewing. Sure as you. That's what I like to see. I heard them rustles from Pike's face when we're heading in. All right. Let's see. Right. My bed. Wonder if you're a liar or not. Hey! Good day. I think you're bluffing. I just know there's gonna be trouble at the bottom, dude. 
I'm just too honest to be good at this game. I'll make a bid. Mm, I don't trust that call. Damn, this die is for you. You know that old timer done shit himself again? Do you do? Hello. I'm gonna bid. Hello. I wouldn't have said it if I didn't think it true. Nice to see you. I see the way he looks at my wife. Them bean eaters got a right old civil war brewing. Sure as shooting. You're on your way out, amigo. If you think it's wise. You Good call. I say spot on. Howdy. And I thought you were we a better liar. Than people this. Off that lane. Them being How are you? Now, are you full of shit, I wonder? David will be drilled clean if he don't shut up. I back you. I say spot on. The honest man is handicapped at this table. Interesting. I wonder. Why don't I make a bid? Hmm. Ooh, I better take a You Doc look like Crockett's a bullshit. Just to be safe. That's way off, my friend. That you McFarland is coming. He's just an underprivileged trooper. Him being here, he's got a right old civil war brewing. Sure as shooting. Unlucky, my friend. I'm getting good at this. Another train got raided on Butter Bridge. Howdy, friend. Howdy. Hello, mister. Hello. I think that's good for now.
You reach the end of the line now! Is this how you want it? Time somebody taught you a lesson! Now y'all lost your damn mind? What the safe doing out here? Mister, these fellers robbed a bank in Armadilla. I've been tracking them ever since. I'm a bit outnumbered. Would you mind lending your guns? Take your move. This ends right here. You think I'm joking?
Thanks for your help, mister. Now I trust you'll return this safe to the banker in Armadilla.
Seth. Hey, John. Hey, partner. Get what you need? Ready to help me? Not quite. Not quite ready. You see, I wasted a bunch of time looking for that last bit of map. And I got to thinking, Moses was a liar. And I imagined myself doing all kinds of unpleasant things to his corpse. <laughs> and then I realized... You realized you were sick in the head? That you needed to move on with your own limited time on Earth? No, partner. I realized Moses were no liar. The issue was Aiden O'Leary, who said he had the body. Aiden died in that flu epidemic, and the bodies weren't even buried yet. I, 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 you got the body sitting in the back of that wagon behind you? Yes, sir. <laughs> You're not even going to wait until they're buried before you... <laughs> well, they don't care, do you, boys? Honest folk, off to a better place. Apart from that Aiden O'Leary fella, I never liked him. They say he laid with his sister. I don't like women, partner. I don't. Not since Mammy died. Seth, what are you gonna do with those bodies? <sighs> I'm gonna take him back to a nice quiet spot and look for the map. I need the map, partner. I need it. I think we should be getting out of here, partner. All right. I know a secluded spot where we can search these sleeping beauties. Town with these bodies. Where are you? Come on, don't be shy. What did you say? I didn't say nothing. Are you talking to them? So what if I am? I feel less alone with them than in a crowd of people. The way I see it, they lost their souls, just like me. You're truly a sick man, Seth. You remind me of why I hate people. For a man who kills so much, you sure seem to have a problem with the dead. Life kills everyone in the end. <laughs> They ain't so different from you and me. Aside from them being dead and rotting, I guess they ain't. All right, Seth, calm down. You talk to the corpses and I'll drive the wagon. Oh, my! It's them damn treasure hunters! Try and outrun them, partner! We don't see them riders first! Fast as you can, partner! I'll search these bodies as we go! It's over, friend! Will you be my friends? No need for money where you're going, friend. All done with this one. Hey, this fella's a little right. Bet he's got something on him. Just going on a little trip. Yeah! This fella had a few bucks on him. There ain't time for a burial, partner. You're a stupid fool. Relax. I just want a little whoopsie. There's my man. I'm on. There's some bullets on this. Better than a poke in the eye. Go left here, partner. Keep touch, old pal. Yes! Here it is! I've got the 
my man, mister! I got it! I got it! Looks like the treasure's in Tumbleweed! That's where I was headed! It's fate! Keep going! We're almost there! Mister, I reckon I'll sit here a while trying to figure this out. I'm gonna be rich. When you're done with that, get over to Fort Mercer. I need you inside that place. After I find my treasure, mister. It's like that, is it? Huh? Not talking to Seth today? <laughs> oh, the old silent treatment. Oh, whoa. Ah, that's quite a stench. Hey, Seth. Oh, oh. Seth, come back here. Oh, hey, partner. I was just looking for you. Looking for me? What? Over there? How you doing? I'm good. Well, uh, see you later, partner. Where you going, partner? Nowhere. <laughs> okay. Nowhere wouldn't happen to be where that thing you're looking for is kept, would it? No, sir. <laughs> no, sir. Come on, partner. Okay, I was just uh, fooling. Partner, uh, you know, the thought of that treasure does funny things to me. According to the map, it's somewhere in that big abandoned house. Forgive me, friend. Seth. What the 
hell? You starting to regret this yet? Kill them all, mister! <laughs> I'll like them better dead! After all these years, <laughs> it's silk sheets and Parisian whores from now on, mister. <laughs> what the goddamn hell is this? A glass eye? I'm sure whoever that belonged to treasured it very much. <laughs> Stupid liars! Those stupid chicken shit maps! Making a damn fool of me. A glass eye! <laughs> it's a glass eye! Stop with the tears and help me with Williamson's gang. And you can come up with another excuse to go exhume one of your old friends. Hunting dead man's treasure ain't done me no favors. Sure. Sure. I'm ready for the living. I'll see you and Mr. West Dickens over at Fort Mercer when you gentlemen is ready. Rest in peace, my friend. That's a good idea.
won't forget what you did here. Maybe it's time to think about a different line of business. Just my luck. Ain't nobody gonna help a girl here. Ain't no man in hey, partner. You surely won't regret a purchase. The marshal best step up post haste. Men starting to question his steel. can only put the Jeb Murphy name on top items. That should keep me going for a while. So long. We got the hardest hardware in town. Jeb Murphy don't put his name to a gun he don't believe in. Browse away.
down you come. Oh, Lord. This is nasty. Sam, we meet again. How you doing out here? Why the shout? Why the dancing? Why the laughter? I, I hope I, I die laughing, I do. You keep this up and you just might. My, my, my grandfather was, was a wise man who came from the east. He, he, he followed, a, followed a star. That, that's still me. I'm still following, still dreaming, still free. <laughs> you, can't, you can't cage us. We are above. We, we, we are above, and, and, and we're free. Sam, you really need to come into town with me. You're not doing so well out no, here. No, no, no. See, I was careless, sir. I, I understand that now, but I, I, I will. I will find me my paradise. I will head west. I will. Come on, Sam. You probably just need a drink. You stay whoa, away whoa. from me. You whoa. stay away. I will find me my California. I, I, I will. Mr. Marston, how are you, sir? I'm all right. I met up with your friend, Seth. Oh, <laughs> Seth of the Dead. <laughs> yes, <laughs> interesting fellow. <laughs> you don't meet many men these days with the moral fortitude to cut straight to the chase like that, do you? <laughs> Thankfully not, Mr. West Dickens. Yes, uh, contemporary society is remarkably harsh on professional exhumers. But did you know that in ancient Egypt, it was an art form valued more highly than literature? I believe Seth comes from that school of thought. <laughs> How very interesting. Look, you thought any more about our plan? Ah, your plan, dear boy. Your plan. I am merely the help, uh, not mercifully the arbiter of wisdom. What you are, dear boy, is the man whose life I've saved twice now. A man who sells lies and deceit to unwitting people. A man who, if he doesn't help me, I won't think twice about putting a bullet through his skull, feeding to the vultures myself. Ah, uh, you see, Mr. Marston, you have the exterior of a violent man, but the soul of an angel, and that is what I think I cherish most about you. <laughs> That's what I thought. Uh, <clears throat> but before we can attend to your particular problems, uh, um, Oh, we need some extra lubricant to oil the machinery of business. And uh, this being America, <coughs> that lubricant with which we concern ourselves <coughs> is money. Money? <coughs> what are you talking about? Oh, oh, we need weapons. Armor plate for the wagon. Extra hands. <coughs> and... I need some danger money. So, 
Let's sell some more of these cures. <laughs> sell cures? Around here? Do you want to see me lynched? Oh, no. The sport of kings. Racing, my friend. The sport of kings. A noble activity without reproach. Exactly the kind of activity where a lying, cheating, degenerate like myself can prosper. <laughs> but come, let's finish the loading and we'll discuss it as we drive. <laughs> Now, sir, you've got to reach! this cart for Mr. West Dickens. Come on, John. I suggest we be a hasty retreat. Right. Best remove ourselves from the stage before somebody decides they want their money back. Bye bye, me.
Well done, sir. Well done. Having you as a ringer has netted us a fine profit. <laughs> we seem to be wasting time, old man. Oh, patience, my friend. The Trojan horse cannot run before it can walk, if you'll forgive the metaphor. Next, we need to procure some grand and overwhelming firepower. And for that, you need to contact an old friend of mine. Goes by the name of Irish. Irish? Yes, uh, he's an interesting kind of fellow. Um, he usually can be found in uh, Armadillo or some other town around here on some Bacchanalian revel or such. <laughs> Great. An alcoholic arms dealer. What could be better? Yes, boy, oh, you messed up properly this time, didn't you? You little paddy bastard. You thieving Nick cunt. You got it all wrong, Welsh. All wrong. It was French, I promise. He said he was going to rip you off. Now he's ripping me off. Here, keep on talking there, Irish. In about 15 more seconds, your whole world's going to turn black. <laughs> What's up, boys? <gasps> Fuck off, boy, oh. This don't concern you. When a man with a sing-song voice tells me to fuck off, it always concerns me, boyo. Look here. This paddy bastard stole our guns. Tried to steal our horses. Law's clear on the matter. I never stole nothing, sir. Never did. Not in all my life. That French cunt is playing with the Welshman's tiny and ineffective mind. Push your mind. <laughs> anyway, you all got horses now. No one needs to die. Leave him be. Who do you think you are, boyo? The bloody cavalry? Your voice is really starting to get on my nerves, boyo. And you're getting on my nerves. Yeah. This is what happens when you poke your nose in. A Mr. Nigel West Dickens said you'd help me locate a machine gun. And since I just saved your life... Oh, I can't thank you enough for taking care of those two degenerates. They're untrustworthy, poor in personal hygiene, lacking in the finer qualities of a, a gentleman. <laughs> uh, what about the gun? It'll be my pleasure. Uh, she's magnificent government issue. It'll be a bit of a ride, but we'll get there soon enough. Uh, follow me, fella. Let's get this over with. The saloon's calling me. Come on, then. Let's find this guy. What's your name, friend? John. John Marston. Talk of luck, you came along, fella. I thought I'd drunk me last breakfast there for a second. <laughs> you were those fine specimens of humanity. They was me only friends in the world. 
And boy, am I glad to see them bastards dead. We all met on the boat over a few years back, we did. Thick as thieves ever since, and that right there was the problem. Is it normal for friends in Europe to drown each other? Never trust a Welshman, me pa always called me. And he got his throat slit, so he should know. The kind of fellows who will steal an acorn from a blind sow and then kick her for squealing. And as for that French bastard... He didn't sound very French. Not for now. The thieving bastards are holed up at the cabin by the lake. Can't wait to see the look on their faces when we blast in there. They'll be more surprised than a slut dog with their first porcupine. You best not be lying to me. Listen, fella, I didn't ask for your help back there. I don't owe you nothing. I'll decide what you do and don't owe me. I've had enough of your overly aggressive manner, fella. You don't know who you're dealing with here. Irish, I've met enough men like you to last me a lifetime. You can make quick work of those fellas if they give you trouble. The gun's stored just inside that chat. What about you helping me out? Uh, I'll cover you from the ridge. I'm better from long range. It'll be a piece of cake, fella. Trust me. It's not here. That lion sack of shit! Just a little something for my troubles. Where are you? Oh, I, who do you want? I, I see you. Get away from me. Right here. Where's that machine gun, Irish? Oh, Mr. Marston. Uh, I, I found you one. Uh. Found us one, Irish. 
We're in this together. You, me, and an assault on Fort Mercer. I'm the guy that saved you from getting killed back there, and who you owe your life to, remember? <laughs> Not really. <laughs> Happens to me all the time. <laughs> you don't want it to happen to you again, do you, Irish? Uh, no, friend. I wants to buy you a drink. I, I wants to tell you how much she means to me, how special she is. And I want to tell you that if you don't produce a Gatling gun within the hour, you'll wish you'd been killed back there. <laughs> it's the whiskey, sir. Uh, it gives me the memory of a newborn babe, as innocent as can be. And it makes me violently angry. Shall we go look for that gun, sir? <laughs> yes. Let's do that. Uh. Come on, Dad. We'll find your precious gun. Somewhere between dying and dead if you try to cross me again. It's worse like that at all, fella. The intentions were pure. I swear it on me poor mother's life. I just get a tad confused from time to time. Honest mistake. If there's any more confusion, I'll finish what your friends in Armadillo started. Jesus, you're an impatient bastard, aren't you? Where's the gun, Irish? I hear some miners been blabbing about a machine gun they found. Apparently, they got it stashed up at Gap Tooth Breach. What do miners want with a machine gun? Shoot it at somebody, I suppose? Or sell it? I don't know. I've never been down a mine in all my life. Sounds real fishy to me, Irish. I've just about had it with you and your gang. You and Wes Dickens are so crooked, you can swallow nails and spit out corkscrews. Maybe if you was more cordial with folks, they might be better inclined to help you. I saved your life and you repaid me by lying, nearly getting me killed. Not far now, Johnny. We should go around the side of Gap Tooth so the miners don't see us coming. I still don't know what miners would want with a machine gun. Miners are always fighty bastards. Spend too long without daylight and doxies, and it starts playing with your mind. I never heard so much shit come out of one mouth. Only telling you what I heard. Oh, and we'll need a wagon or something to get it out of there. That gun's heavier than sin. So how was I supposed to move it by myself last time? Two-faced little bastard. Here we are. Let's stop here a moment to get a lie of the land. The entrance is plain to see, and there's a shaft them bastards used to haul out heavy ore. We, I mean you, can use that lift to get you and the gun to the surface. I do it all myself, but the mines play havoc with me sinuses. I'll find us a fine place to hide these horses, and then return with a borrowed flat wagon. I'll meet you at the mouth of the mine shaft, and Irish, I strongly advise you don't run off this time. You're trespassing. State your business or move along. Open fire!
up to hundred fools oh, like you.
Excuse me, mister. I'd be looking at your carps being hauled up this lift. Load up and I'll engage the gears. He is. What a beautiful weapon. God's own gun. Ain't that the truth? I got us a borrowed flatbed parked down. Don't let go of her. She's a beast. now and we'll have this executive peacemaker delivered to old west dickens just make sure it doesn't fall off on the way
already got myself a woman, miss. Excuse me. Careful, sir. Use a hand here. Be a sport, huh? Cut me. Jimmy, <laughs> I didn't know you were a miner. I'm not sport. This is the first time that I've ever been underground. But I like getting a preview of being buried. It should be fun, but not funny. What? Your eastern wit is wasted on my dumb western brain, sport. Oh, don't worry, you're not missing much. I'm beginning to think that this article will be better written on a tropical island in the arms of a beautiful maiden. Interesting idea. Now, can we get out of here? Yes, please. I appreciate your help, sir, but now I must...
just lost another couple heads of cattle.
go. Do what you want with him. That's the spirit that made this country great, Park. He'll taste some armadillo justice. I don't justice do so good when I can't move free. Come on! Howdy. Thanks, sport. You are a true American hero. Right. What are you doing down here? Well, I just thought I'd see a little bit of the local color, you know? But these gentlemen have seen to it that I've enjoyed the true hospitality of the frontier. Hey, uh, cigar? Let's get out of here. Right.
the rocks to face me. Show me what you got. You made your last mistake. French hole! Glad to see there's some good folk left around here. Rest in peace, my friend. something for my trouble. Sister, put them up. Irish, what are you doing? Who the hell are you? Give me that. I'm your old friend, Amnesia. Oh, oh good. Blimey. I've come to tell you, if you ever pretend to forget my name or your debt to me again, I'll make sure you reach heaven before these two ladies. Now get down there. Oh. 
Oh, oh, Mr. Marston. Oh, how are you? Ashamed. Oh. Ashamed to know you. What the hell's wrong with you, robbing these gentlewomen and ladies of the Lord? I thought they was doxies. Oh. Ladies, I'm sorry about this man. He's unfortunately lost his mind to the demon drink. At least I hope he has, and he wasn't this stupid all along. So, uh, please excuse us. Now, Irish, a Gatling gun doesn't work. I find that rather upsetting, don't you? Oh, heartbreaking. Which is why I was just coming to see you when the drink got the better of me. <laughs> Ah, come on. I know where we can find a, a parts for you. Oh, mother fucking Mary. How about a drink or two? Oh, I see you. Sorry, ma'am. I'm a married man. Huh? I'm gonna rip you up. What you looking at? What you looking at? I can't huh? see a man walk around with such a dry pecker. Can I help? Drunk as I am, my pricker and fine working order. <laughs> what a lusty specimen you are. I like that. That fresh air's got me head spinning like a top. Can't be good for a fella. Shut up, you lazy drunk, before I stop your head spinning with a bullet. I resent that, Johnny. I've been working like a beaver on your behalf. You've been working like a weasel on my behalf. Bushwhacking defenseless ladies of the cloth? You must have been raised on sour milk, Irish. What are you talking about? I'm a good Catholic boy. You're a booze-blind coward. And you're a hypocrite, Marston. You've robbed just as many innocent folks as me. I tried to only rob those who had more than they deserved. Christ, the church has more money than anybody. Where are we going, Irish? Hey, Don't just go to the off. warehouse Please. here in Thieves Landing. I'm telling you, Johnny There's boy, it's all set up. Fight. We're meeting this pal Man, of mine at the back door of the office. Pobble Tom Feller by the name of Shaky. And he's got the ammunition we need? Jesus, stop fretting, will you? I knows about guns front, back, and sideways. You're going to be real familiar with mine if things keep on this way. This is it. Come on, Smiler. <laughs> Damn it. That stuttering bastard said this would be open. Come on, let's see if we can get in around the back. I'm beginning to lose my patience. Starting to think you're soft on me, Johnny boy. Can't even sneeze these days without you being there to catch the drift. This is your last chance, you good for nothing, shyster. You've already wasted too much of my time. All right, we should be able to get in here. Stick with me and keep quiet. Shaky's made the arrangements, and he'll... Oh, oh, oh. Oh, 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 shite. Sounds like Shaky's only gone and got himself found out. <laughs> All right. Now all we have to do is find out who you work with. You hear me? Shaky, you wretched fucking son of a whore. Suck my again! <laughs> Oh! Uh, labor relations don't sound like they're exactly... At an all-time high. You sneak in and get poor Shaky loose. I'll go get the wagon. Good luck, Marston. He's a good man, that Shaky. I'll be waiting out by the front gate with the wagon. Good luck.
Thank you for your kindness, mister. I thought th 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 I was dead, man. My kindness is only as good as the bullets you can fetch up for me and your friend Irish. Let me down, and you'll be a dead man. This is gonna be one hell of a fight. Let's head for the door. Now we're even. Half even, Shaky. You still owe me for them morphine pills to calm your nerves. Sh -sh 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 <laughs> you'll, you'll get your half. More, you dirty fu 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 fucking snake. Uh, bu 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 All right, gentlemen. <laughs> Let's go. Fucking. Fuck. Oh, my virgin ears. Fuck. All right, pop on. I'll get this out of here. This is a bad place to be idle, Teller. Did you have fun in there, you and Shaky? I killed a lot of men for this damn machine gun of yours. I'm sorry I missed all the dramas. You always miss all the drama. There must be cobwebs growing on that holster of yours. Someone's got to drive the wagon, don't they? Teamwork, Johnny boy. That's my game, not just the glory like you. Shoot 
Ghost bastard! I'm gonna head for McFarlane! enough ammunition here to take down a small country, fella. I'm going to need it. Bill Williamson's got himself an army. So I guess this is where we part ways, Johnny Marston. Or maybe not, friend. You're going to be right alongside me when I take on that fort. After all you put me through, it's time you pull the damn trigger for once. Show me what a big, bad killer you really are. Uh, yes, of course. What am I thinking? Don't worry, you can count on me. I just hope I don't steal all your glory. Wouldn't be right or proper. Marston, we'll have West Dickens's wagon rigged and ready to go soon enough. Mr. Marston, sir, John Marston. Mr. Marston, don't be so childish. Come on, sir, I implore you. Okay, 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 so I made a few innocent mistakes when last we met, but my plan is still sound. Together we can conquer, if not the world, and certainly Bill Williamson. But first, you need me to do you a favor? <laughs> You read my mind. I can only deduce you've been taking my tonic, sir, as instructed. It can give the most ordinary of intelligences a remarkable insight. I'll give you insight. I'll show you what your guts look like. Please, sir, this show of petulance is nothing short of embarrassing. Think for a moment, sir. Think. I'm thinking about how much of my time you're wasting. 
Um, sir, sir, I am about to do something which I greatly discourage in all wise and rational men. A selfless act for you. But, sir, before I act selflessly, allow me to act selfishly and sell some of my wares. Fair enough. Oh, good, sir. Come, and let's go visit some of our fine friends in the other oil business we have here in Plainview. These men need all the help they can get. Friends, hardworking souls of uh, plain view, do you suffer from rheumatism, lumbago, acute chronic sciatic, uh, neurologic, or inflammatory pain? Well, I represent the only company that makes the genuine article which cures headache, neuralgia, uh, toothache, earache, backache, Fraud. swelling... This man is a fucking charlatan. He just got done swindling us down at Cho Springs with this song and dance. I say we tar and feather him right I now. I say we shoot the uh, bastard. I think it's time we take our business elsewhere. Uh, I apologize if science is not your forte. Good day, one and all. Somebody get that thieving back! Homobonus has not been looking down on me favorably. Oops! Homobonus, the patron saint of businessmen. I'd say he's giving you your just desserts. No! Poppycock! Those in basement clearly informed of my refund policy. You could only shit on people for so long before they decide it's their turn to pull down the pan. A crude metaphor in every sense of the word, my dear boy. You need the business to me. Do I try to tell you how to rob banks? Robbing banks is no more honest than this. Respect science! It's over, friend!
Respect science! Dear boy, you saved the day again. It always impresses me with the speed with which a group of men can turn from passive sheep into murderous wolves. I'm impressed with how you nearly got us killed back there. Oh, uh, yes, uh, perhaps we should shell the tonics business for a period. Let's say we try our hand at racing again. There's a meet at Ratskeller. You're trying my patience, Mr. West Dickens. Well, I'm sorry, dear boy, but I'm only an aging vendor of exotic elixirs, not the bloody U.S. Cavalry. Forgive me if matters take some time to prepare. Don't you think? Mr. West Dickens! Ah, Mr. Marston! How wonderful to see you, sir. How wonderful. Are we ready, then? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, nearly, sir. Very nearly, sir. I just need some cash to get some extra hardware fitted to my old Trojan horse here. You, you what? <laughs> Never mind, sir. I can only presume that you have not enjoyed the benefits of a classical education, so I will not take umbrage if some of my illusions sail over your head, sir. I won't pretend to understand you, but I will endeavor to make you understand me. Either we do this right now, or I put a bullet in you and get on with my day. Please, I knew you were a violent man, Mr. Marston, but I did not think you were a stupid one. We need money to outfit my carriage, to turn a simple tradesman's vehicle into something more subterfuge. <laughs> and I'm about to tell you how we are going to gain said cash. Now I know that you ride very well. So come, sir, to Rathskeller Fork. <laughs> Follow me, John. It's not too far to Rathskeller Fork. John? Okay, all things considered, hopefully we can get through today without running into another army of your satisfied customers. Onwards and upwards! I refuse to let the blind stupidity of the proletariat derail my calling in life. Nothing blind about it. I'd say they saw right through you. Ah, uh, before knowledge comes doubt, my dear boy. Everybody knows you're as crooked as a dog's hind leg, Wes Dickens. I resent that implication, John. I wasn't implying. I was telling, if you're such a successful businessman, what are you doing living in a cave? Delightfully Dickensian, isn't it? If you say so. Are you familiar with the concept of philanthropy, John? I'm surprised you are. Oh, I don't do any of this for myself, John. I hope you realize that. You're crazy, old man. You seem to be forgetting that I've been part of your ridiculous charade. Ah, seeing a lame woman walk again. That's all the pay I need. It's been quite a ride, John, hasn't it? We haven't gone that far. No, I mean us. Pitchwood Farm, Gap Tooth Breach, Plainview. We make quite a team, you and me. Brains and brawn. We should consider a more permanent partnership. This partnership ends as soon as I have Bill Williamson. I appreciate your help, but I've just about had it with all your schemes. 
need to realize what's at stake here. I know, John, I know. Just win this race and we'll be ready. I give you my word. Gentlemen, this will be a fair race. No shooting, stabbing, cliff pushing, rock throwing, cactus grinding, neck lassoing, setting fires, or other acts that causes the rider to unfairly lose his weight or bleed heavily or black out. Get yourselves ready. Set. Go. Go.
Mickey King, he saw, he conquered. <laughs> what a fantastic spectacle, John. Let's take a moment to bask in the glory of our victory. Have we got enough money now? Yeah, yeah, all right, all right, all right. Uh, yes, once Seth and Irish have furnished their side of the bargain, I think we should be ready. Quite a team we've assembled, don't you think? A bunko, a grave robber, and a drunk. How could things possibly go wrong? I need your help. You and every other fool around here. No, they took her. They took my love. They stole Jeff's heart, and they, they took her away. What, what are you talking they about, friend? They took my love. They took Jeff's love by them gangsters. They hide out of tumbleweed. <laughs> can you help me, partner? Partner, can you help me? <sighs> I doubt it. But if I head up that way, I'll see what I can do. Help a fella out, partner. Have a soul. <laughs>